Good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Daily Race. Hey, today is Monday morning, November the 1st, and we are ready to get rolling today. Hey, if you woke up here on a Monday excited to hear from Pastor Ryan, I'm so sorry. You got me for the next few days. Uh, Pastor Ryan asked if I step in for this week to kind of do the first half of Judges, and then next week, Pastor Ryan will be back, and he will be bringing it for that second half of Judges. So hopefully you can track with us right on through there. And the Daily Race is all about us taking what? One step at a time, not a marathon, not a sprint, but just taking one step in our walk in relationship with Jesus Christ and uh, just seeing what happens as a result. Now, I got to tell y'all something real quick before we get going. Last night was epic, y'all. Last night was epic. Okay, so last night was Halloween and I don't know about you, but at our house, man, we love to practice irrational generosity on that day. So we got all ready. We bought more candy bars than ever before this year because at our house, we don't play around. We give out the full-size candy bars here, right? We want them kids to show up from our community and be like, I'll be back next year. That's right. Especially, man, I'll tell you something. When you're a pastor, people be avoiding your house like the plague 364 days out of the year. But when it gets to Halloween and you got them full-size candy bars, they be showing up, right, in numbers. So I'll tell you what, man. We got more candy bars than ever before last night. And our community showed up in a bigger way than ever before last night. Man, they were coming left and right, left and right. And by the end of the night, for the first time ever, we ran out of candy. That was a good thing, y'all. Love the fact that we could be a blessing to our community, practicing irrational generosity. All right. You didn't come here to hear about my epic stories. You came here to hear about Jesus Christ. What in the world is he up to here uh, in the book of Judges? So we're going to be in the book of Judges chapter 2 verses 10 through Judges 3, 3 chapters, chapter 3, verse 6. Check out what it says right here in Judges chapter 2, verse 10. It says, and, and what's powerful about this, by the way, is the fact that you got to realize what came before the book of Judges was the book of Joshua. And Joshua was a great military leader. He led the Israelites into the promised land. Amazing things are happening. Good things are happening. The people of Israel are seeing God at work in powerful ways. And Joshua makes a big declaration at the end of that book. He says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He's got all Israel excited about serving God and giving him their best. And look at what Judges chapter 2 verse 10 says right after that. It says, after that generation died, another generation grew up who did not acknowledge the Lord or remember the mighty things he had done for Israel. Can you believe that? After that generation died, the next generation that came up, they didn't even know the Lord, didn't acknowledge the things that he'd done for them. And I think, man, that's one of the saddest verses in the entire Bible right there. The fact that this entire nation of Israel was on the right track. They were doing things in amazing ways. They were seeing God's hand of blessing in their life. God had brought them into the promised land. And yet, the very next generation after them, they turned from God. They didn't know his ways. They didn't follow him. Can I tell you guys something? This right here, it should be one of those moments that, that made it really stand out to us from God's word. This should be one of those epiphanies we should have that, we are all one generation away from our families not following Jesus Christ. We're one generation away from the entire world not following Jesus Christ or knowing who he is or somebody pointing them to him. And the reason why they got this way is because they probably weren't doing what God told them to do in the first place. God said, you're supposed to talk about these things when you're at home and with your kids and when you're going and when you're coming and when you're on the road and when you're back home. He says, you're supposed to talk about these things when you go to bed and when you get up. You're supposed to share the goodness of God with their kids and with their family. And what happens if we don't share this with them, all it takes is one generation to the next for them to forget about God entirely and what he could do for them inside of their lives. And what ends up happening next is the people, they end up serving other gods. The gods they mention most often are the gods of Baal and Ashtoreth. These are two gods that they continued to serve over their time. And kind of like what happens, it's almost like when some kids go off to college, right? Some kids go off to college and they just get into all kinds of stupid. They just forget everything that they were taught or what they learned. And sometimes they go to college and they, they do things they've never done before. They say things they've never said before. They experience things they've never experienced before. And they just out kind of living this crazy life. And the Israelites find themselves doing this. They're, they're invited some of their neighbors around who, and, and they, they're, they're doing things they shouldn't be doing. They're living in ways they shouldn't be living. And so look at what God does to them just a few verses later. Check this out. We read in verse 15 that every time, as a result of this, every time Israel went out to battle, the Lord fought against them 
causing them to be defeated just as he had warned. And the people were in great distress. <laughs> I got to tell you guys something. If you're going into a battle and God is fighting against you, <laughs> you're going to lose. I don't care how good you are. I don't care how great your military is. I don't care what kind of advantages you have or all kinds of amazing technology or equipment you have at your disposal. If God is against you, you will not win. And so God went out and he fought against Israel's armies. And so time after time, because they weren't following him, his people were defeated. Time after time, they were deflated. Time after time, they were in distress because God was fighting against them. But can I tell you something? Even way back here in the book of Judges, back in the Old Testament, we get a powerful glimpse of God's mercy. A powerful glimpse of the grace that can only be provided by God. Because right after that verse that says God was fighting against them, the very next verse, Judges 2.16, says, Then the Lord raised up judges to rescue the Israelites from their attackers. That God, although he was fighting against them, he got to a point where he's like, you know what? I feel so bad for these people. I'm going to actually raise up judges, raise up these deliverers, these saviors within their own people who will help them so they can win some of these battles. God raises up some of these judges. And unfortunately, what you're going to notice throughout the book of Judges is, man, their devotion to God is short-lived. They live for God while the judge is there and they're excited, they're loving God. And when that judge passes away, it's just like what happened before. After that generation passes away, another one comes up and they don't follow God. So we're going to see this and we're going to track through this over and over throughout the book of Judges. So stick with us for these next few weeks and watch what happens. But here's my challenge for you right now. Remember how it said, after that generation died, another one grew up who did not know the Lord. My challenge for you and for me is to make sure our kids and our grandkids know about Jesus Christ. Make sure we share with them the stories of our lives, the stories of what God has done in our life and what God has done throughout history and in his word. Let's make sure that amongst our family, that while we're serving the Lord, we're doing whatever we can to pass his goodness down to the next generation. So parents, grandparents, you've been challenged. Let's do whatever we can to make sure that after our generation passes away, our next generation grows up to serve the Lord their God with all their heart, their soul, their mind, and their strength. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this morning. What a great opportunity we get to connect with you, be reminded about what's happened in the past, to do whatever we can to prevent that from happening in the future. God, my prayer is for families today, for parents today, for grandparents today, that we would pour into this next generation. Thank you for our church family and PVC kids and PVC students and PVC young adults and ministries that are really aimed and targeted at helping the next generation out. But God, let us take personal responsibility. Let us do whatever we can to raise up our kids and our grandkids in such a way that they know who you are, they share your light with others, and they get a chance to see you moved on to the next generation. God, may the thing that marked our generation be that we passed your name on to the next generation and may we see the joy of them passing that on to the next generation too. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, y'all, it's time to go on and get it today. So get on out there on a Monday, let that light shine bright, and let's make November one to remember. Have an amazing day, y'all. Holla!